but they said they were able to handle things a lot better and everybody knew how to deal with it because they knew how to fix it right away. Yeah. Because I bet you it's getting boring for a lot of people, so it makes it harder for people to deal with the stuff. Yeah, I'm pretty sure by, by now everybody just wants it to be dealt with and over with so we can get back to some kind of normal life. Yeah, like it's hopefully by September or something but we can get back to like going places, I guess. Yeah, it'd be nice when it's like there's no COVID restrictions, right? Like even kids, they can't go over and visit their friends at their house. They can't have sleepovers like they usually would, you know, like every, like. Yeah. Just little things like that, even um, people, you know, aren't going on their date nights every Friday night like they used to. So I just miss going to stores because I like to go to stores a lot, like Masonville. That's the biggest thing I like being Masonville. I like to go to Masonville and see all the new technology that comes out. Yeah, I like Masonville too. Usually when I go to a mall in London, though, it's um, White Oaks. Yeah, I guess every, I heard a lot of things have shut down there because of COVID. White Oaks, yeah, I haven't been for a while because of everything, right? Is, is there anything that makes do you ever want to go back doing that stuff though no 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 i love the way my life is right now so i just want to keep it that way it's yeah it's good did you ever before go back to doing that stuff whenever you tried to stop i did yeah like i tried to stop drinking on my own twice Uh um the one time i the one time i did very good i didn't drink for about two and a half months and then i slowly got back into it um and then my daughter passed away and then i started drinking even more and then i tried to quit myself again and i couldn't do it myself so that's when i reached out for help how'd you reach Oh. Um, I told my mom that I was an alcoholic and that I wanted help. So I went to a couple AA meetings and um, the first AA meeting, I went to that one and I went home and I drank. And then the next week I went back and my friend drove me. And it's before we were even out of the parking lot of the church, I had opened a beer. So I was like, yeah, I don't want to go to AA meetings because AA meetings, then I just like, I just want to drink. Like, I don't know. I didn't understand it. Like sit there and talk about, sit there and talk about drinking for an hour, an hour and a half and then leave and not want to drink. I don't know. (laughs) That's like all I wanted to do when I was there was drink. So, and then, so I got a counselor and then I ended up going to rehab. What was the hardest part of getting off alcohol? Um, I guess the hardest part is having to, like I said before, like having to like deal with things sober, Mm -hmm. right? Like can't just drink and forget about the feelings and drink and, you know, not have to feel the feelings or not have to deal with what's going on right in front of me. So... How long were you in rehab for? I was gone for 40 days. So I went to detox first and then I did, um, I think it was like a 35 day program. Is that the same place? No, I had to go to detox um, first and then from straight from detox, I went to rehab. So then what's detox? Um, detox is where you... <clears throat> detox is where you get off of whatever you're on so like so for example like say like when because when you stop when you stop drinking like that's going to make you sick if you don't have alcohol or say if you are on other drugs if you stop it you're going to get sick right um and actually like when you quit alcohol it you could um go like it could just the abrupt um absence of the alcohol can set, is a shock to your system and like you could go as far as to have a heart Heart attack because oh. you stopped just like that right you can't do so you that. can get a heart attack from just stopping yes because it's a shock to your system now now so you go to detox for well two reasons really um one is to medically detox so like for example when i went um, they gave me Valium when I was there and that what? way they gave me, like, they put me on medication. They put me on medication while I was there and they watched me detox and made sure that I detox in a healthy manner. And the second reason that you go to detox is because re- the rehabilitation center won't take mm-hmm. you if you still have the drugs in your system or if you haven't come if you haven't detox from alcohol wow. like you have to, yeah it can't be in your system because rehab isn't the place to detox rehab is where you go to 
rehabilitate yourself, right? To learn all those new coping mechanisms. They're teaching you how to deal with life being sober, right? They don't, they don't do the part where they help you get off the drugs. They do the part where they help you deal so with how, being off the drugs. So how did you get, tra- how do you get transferred? Do you have to get someone to drive you or? Yeah, no, somebody from the rehabilitation center drove across town, picked me up from the detox center and drove me back to rehab. Like one of the counselors at the rehab came pick me up mm-hmm. yeah so that way i went just straight from detox to rehab and i didn't get out or anything i just from one to the next in the same day so they take you the same day yes so you don't have to stay overnight at the detox place oh no i just stay like four or five days at the detox place and then what i meant was i go from detox to rehab in the same day oh cool like there's no in between there's no time where i'm doing anything else but going to detox and rehab uh-huh. that's good so did, they, so did they uh what's the worst thing that happened in rehab well rehab was difficult um because things you know were being addressed like i was talking about having to deal with things right so um i had to face a lot of my past a lot of my past trauma uh-huh. right i had to come to terms with that um in order to understand why i feel the way i feel about certain things why i am the way i am about certain things and learn how to cope with those in a healthy way uh for example like a lot of my trauma comes from when i was a child and um like i have abandonment issues and i never really even considered that or was aware of that until i went to rehab and the after The second week I was there, I had a really bad nightmare. I woke up and this has never happened to me in my life. I woke up and I was hyperventilating. I've never hyperventilated for anything in my life. Um, It was so scary. I thought I was going to die. To be honest, it was so scary. I couldn't breathe. So I knew I was going to be able to talk. So I grabbed my journal, wrote, wrote down what was wrong as I was trying to like catch my breath. And then I went downstairs to the office as there's a counselor there at all times for you. So I went down there and I talked to her about it. And then over the next couple of days through the counselors and through um, doing certain groups, I kind of dealt with what that issue was. And, you know, so, um, and it came down to um, just having abandonment issues and they're coming out like that, that issue is coming out in my, was coming out in my dreams. And it was, Mm -hmm. it was very scary. I've never had such bad dreams. Like, and since I've been out of rehab, like I had three of those dreams in rehab. And since I've been out, I've had two of them. Right. So, and they're just just mm-hmm. as scary today as they how were a year ago. How do you deal with them now? Like those dreams, like do you have the same? Um, well, I have like I have better coping skills, right? So like when I have one of those dreams, like those dreams, what those dreams consist of is everybody that I love, my kids, my best friend, you know, um, they're always in it. My dads, my stepdad, and my other dad, they're always in it. Um, and in those dreams, nobody wants anything to do with me. There's a situation like it's always comes down to that. There, none of them are. Sometimes they're all laughing at me as they're walking away together, but I can't go with them. Like it's, so it's like an abandonment thing. Like everybody's going to leave me. So is that how you started like doing drugs and everything too? Uh, Like I didn't have the drugs, but like, that's um, one of the things I was talking about. Like that's a trauma that I went through that could have contributed to my addiction, contributed to, I don't want to feel those things. Nobody wants to feel those things. Yeah. Right. It's just, you know, like say, like, for example, like when you start feeling anxious, there's things that you can do so you don't feel that way. It's like yep. that with my sobriety. If I'm start to feel a certain way and I know that once I start feeling that way, I might drink. I want to, you know, I'm going to do something so I don't feel that way. So I don't drink. Uh-huh. Right. And as the more I, the more I do it, the more natural it becomes. And it, it does get easier. It gets easier not to drink. Right. And I just have to remind myself. If, you know, like if the thought is really strong, I just have to remind myself that it's not worth it. I just have to think back to what happened before when I did drink. That's how I wake up every day with my anxiety is that I feel very stressed. Well, I feel really like that bad in the morning. Yeah, and you, yeah, and sometimes you have to talk to yourself, right? And, you know, like like for me, for example, well, with my not, dreams, well, I have to... I would, well, it's not that I do any of that stuff, but I would just, I just feel that stressed. Yeah. Like I have to remind myself, like if when I have those nightmares and I wake up, I have to, instead of like being like putting like, you know, really letting it bring me down. I have to remind myself that that's not the way it is. That's a dream. My kids Mm -hmm. do want to be in my life. My kids do want me around. My friend does want me around. My parents do want me around. Like, Mm -hmm. I know it's not true, but it's just, it's so, it's such a, it's such a heavy dream. 
Yeah. Right. And it really weighs on you. Like it still puts me a little bit off throughout the day, but I don't uh-huh. really let it bring me too down. Like, sure, when I wake up, I cry and whatever, get that done and over with. And then I move on with the day, yeah. right? And throughout the day, I will sometimes even have to remind myself multiple times because it's always there now in the back of my head now for the day or for two days. And I always have to remind myself that that's just crazy talk that yeah. they do, you know? So I, yeah. So I just have to remind myself that when I think certain things, like that's not always the way that it actually is. It's just the mm-hmm. thinking. The thinking is sometimes what, like, if you over just think and think. And I mean, it doesn't always work. <laughs> it, does, it doesn't always work, you know. And I'm like, you know, I'll still be like, oh, whatever. You know, I still sometimes feel bad. But then I just have to keep keep reminding myself and uh-huh. think about, you know, how far I have come and everything. I have to remind myself all the positive things before yeah. the neg- Yeah. So, because... I don't want to think of the negative things. Because mm-hmm. it's very easy to think the negative sometimes. Yeah, well, it's easier to think of negative, right? Especially when it comes to yourself. Yeah, but think of the positive things that makes you feel better. Like, tell yourself that, you know, you like if you're struggling with something, but you know mm-hmm. you can do it because you've done it before. I just tell myself, you know, I can do this. Just calm down. Sometimes I have to take a step back and be like, okay, just relax. You're fine. Like, I'll tell myself, like, just chill. <laughs> Why are you getting so excited? Mm-hmm. Yep. Did you, did you have any more questions for me? Not really. Are you uh, 